morning. I just appreciate what the Spirit of the Lord's doing in this place. And Rose, if you can't teach after this, my goodness, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Lord, touch us and help us. Praise the Lord. What an awesome, awesome service. Dale, that song, To Be Like Jesus, just goes right with, I'm going to be speaking. I appreciate you all so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Doris, for allowing me this opportunity. I've studied a lot. I've prayed a lot. And I just want to touch base on what Doris said last week. What an awesome teaching. What an awesome teaching that we had. And she said one point. The man was at his lowest point. And the waters were there. But nobody was to carry him down. But he met the master. He met the master, and the master said, go, take your mat up and follow me. I want to speak tonight. I've got three points, and I like illustrations, so I've got some illustrations, and I appreciate Naomi for helping me with those today. And first I want to look at... Just exist with what you have and be satisfied. Just exist and be satisfied with what you have. That's not what God wants us. Dear Lord, I just ask that you touch tonight. Have your hand upon us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, it's not my words. It's not me. It's all about you. Lord, I thank you for the... the touch that you have already given us, Lord, and this is just a dessert. You've already given us the meal of your worship and praise, and here comes the dessert of your word. And Lord, we thank you and we feast on it, because it's your word that won't go void, and we praise you for it. Psalms 51.10 says, create in me a pure heart, O God, renew a steadfast spirit within me. If you look at that scripture and you take it apart, you cannot, you cannot exist with what you have and be satisfied. That's not how God made us. That is not how God made us. He made us hungry. He made us to thirst. He made us to praise him and worship him. This is how we're supposed to live. But sometimes Christians get in a way of just thinking, I can do better. And that's where they leave it. Sometimes I'm guilty of it. I can do better just leaving it. Just leave it. I can do better. And that's all they think about. But it has to be a choice. Do you know that's how beautiful our God is? He gives us a choice. Dale, he gives us a choice. He didn't tell us he's going to make us serve him. He said, here I am. Here I am. I will fill you. I will give you the desires of your heart. I will love on you. But most of all, I died for you. And we have so much to be thankful for. Be teachable rather than offended when God is dealing with you. Ooh. We have to be teachable. And then in Philippians 1, 6, and I'm, so, I'm not going to apologize. I love Scripture, and I will give you a lot of Scripture. Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He's not finished with us, Debbie. He never will be. Robert, he's never going to be, not up until the day we see him. Then he says, come on in, thou good and faithful servant. Isn't that wonderful how God is? He is so awesome. It started 
with Dale preaching the last two Sundays on Almost Saved and the Cross. And if we can't get that in our spirit and we can't come to the cross, we got to do some praying big time. Because our pastor has given us the word. Our pastor has given us what God has instructed us to do. And this is where we start, by living our life totally and completely in him. This Christian life is not a three or more step program. It is for your whole life as long as you are breathing. I can't give you step A, step B, step C, step D. I can't do that. Because each one of us are different. Each one of us have different roles. Each one of us are made differently. Thank goodness we're not made the same. What a boring life we would have. But each one of us, and if we in tune get together, God made us that way different so that we don't clash, we mesh together. It's not a clashing, it's a meshing together. That's how God wants us. That's how God wants us to live in him. We desire we desire holiness but settle for compromise, hungering for the divine, yet trade it for the stale porridge and a nap in the shade. How sad that we could go as Christians where he wants to let us feast on, what would you say, what's a, a steak? I don't eat much steak, so filet mignon. We can feast on filet mignon, but we'd rather have dry up old hamburger. <laughs> we limit him. We limit God. We limit God. Jesus understands. Now, this is, get this in our spirit. Jesus understands our weakness, gives us the power, and know how to change. Partner with him to change. He knows how to change us, but we have got to be willing, Brother Brown, to change. You shared to say about how God has touched you and God has touched the situations that you've been praying for. He wants to do that with all of us. It's not just a certain person, but it's every one of us. The Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. That's in 1 Samuel 10, 6 and 7. That's not New Testament, that's Old Testament. So we can gleam off the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Whatever we do, don't leave us. This should be our prayer. Whatever you do, Lord, don't leave us the same way. Make us more like you. That is what Dale was trying to say when we were praising the Lord. Lord, don't let us leave here like we came in. Make us more. Give us more. Feed us more. Saturate our life. Marinate us more. I heard that a couple of weeks ago, and it ministered to me. I was marinating in the scriptures, and that's what I was doing these last week when I was asked. I was marinating in them, and I was digging into them, and I was feasting on these scriptures because God is showing us what he wants us to be. And he's given us so much, so much word, so many illustrations, so many things that, he, that we have dug out, the nuggets that Doris has dug out of the Word, and, the, and what Brother uh, Pastor Dale has dug out. We have been digging. It's a gold mine. We've been digging in these gold mine of scriptures and of nuggets that God has for us. We can either say this way, and hope we can slide on into heaven. 
Or we can do as the scriptures say, therefore, if anyone in Christ is the new creation, the new creature has come, the old one has gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17. And then in Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore in liberty, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Galatians 5.1. If I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. Nuggets. Nuggets to feast on. Nuggets to live on. My next point is walk the walk. Now, if some of you are hikers... I'm just a plain old walker, but if some of you are, you're going to have a hiking bag. And in that, we're going to look at spiritual-wise, God gives us the Word. And you have to, so you don't dry up, He gives us water. But most of all, he gives us the fruit of the Spirit. Illustrations you won't forget. So as we're walking the walk, We're saturated. We won't dry up because we've got the word right here. And we thirst after him. But oh my. <laughs> he gives us the fruit of the spirit that we can overcome. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. Paul was tied to Christ. Paul was tied to the gospel. And Paul's walk was a journey, not a sprint. We got to learn to walk. If you were a child, you learned to walk. You didn't go out running. You only wish that some of the children would just learn to just walk and not run right away. But we learn to walk. I was watching Daystar the other day, and Joni was talking about her table talk and the years that have gone. And one person had said something that stuck in my mind. Your memories will always be about the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. People, savor the ride that God has given you. Savor the moments that he has put in your path. Yes, they're not always going to be wonderful. Yes, there's going to be trials and tribulations. He said that. He didn't hide it. There's not one thing that he hid from us. He said there would be because he did them. He went through them. He knew when he needed to go to the mountains, he needed to know that he needed those mountain experiences to go through the valleys. And we are the same way, that as we're hiking, we have our bag, we're hiking up those trails, and we're, we're saturated with the word, we're drinking from the fountain of life, God's given us the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. We can make it. People, we can make it. You are called by God to walk in your purpose. You are called by God to live your destiny. You are on earth for such a time as this. God does not make a mistake. 
He knew you had to go through the things you went through two weeks ago or a week ago, Robert. He knew you could handle it. He wasn't far from you. He was right there with you. He was right there with you. Yes, you had to face it, but you came out a victor, not a victim. God does not make mistakes. You were built for this season. Let his power flow through you. You are his own. We are his. No matter what we go through, we are his. And he's right there with us, Linda. He's right there. Right there. Choose choose to trust God and walk with him. There are many walks we are to take in our Christian life. So I'm going to go through three walks. Walk of faith. Faith is what God treasures most in his children. And the scripture's words fulfill that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way was Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Abraham is only a man in the Bible who is called a friend of God. How do you think he earned that title? He wasn't a perfect man because twice, not just once, twice, he gave up his wife as a sister to save his own neck. You know, (laughs) I mean, he wasn't perfect. So why was he called a friend? Abraham was a man of faith. He was a successful farmer, but when God told him to leave everything and go to the unknown destination, he didn't hesitate. He had faith in God's promise to give him a son And God finally gave him a son and named him Isaac. And when God requested Abraham to give his son up, he didn't say, not this time, Lord. Not going to happen. I waited too long. A hundred years? I mean, come on. A hundred years, Lord, and you're asking me to give him up? How much do you love me, Abraham? How much do you love me? And you all know the story. God made a way where there seemed to be no way, but he made a way. Jesus said to him, go, your faith, trust has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight. I'm sorry. I apologize. (laughs) I skipped over. Then they came to Jericho. Let's look at another story. Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road, as was his custom. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Many sternly rebuked him, telling him to keep still and be quiet. But he kept shouting all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped. And tell him, I'm busy. Don't you know I'm on a mission? Don't you know I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something else? But he stopped. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, telling him to take courage, get up. He's calling for you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Now, he'd been waiting, so he wasn't wasn't about to miss this opportunity. And isn't that how we're supposed to be? And at times, we're not. When we're supposed to be having that opportunity, but we're so busy, We're so busy doing other things that God's saying, here's your opportunity. Let me touch you. Let me give, let me pour into you. 
Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He already knew. Jesus already knew. He wanted him to ask him. The blind man said, Rabboni, my master, let me regain my sight. Jesus said, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following Jesus on the road. So that's walking in faith. So many of us, we forget to walk in faith. We get so tied up in our problems that we forgot we serve a, a man that ha, is a solution. We fail to see that he has a solution for us. It's not always going to be what we want it to be, but he said he'd be there for us. Walk in love. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. Love transforms, love builds, love liberates. The love of God will set you free. Choose to walk in love. Choose to let love lead your heart. Love is a powerful weapon and will release you from the bondage of the past. Love covers, love, love restores. Love will soften and cultivate the ground of your heart. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is slow to wrath. Love will never leave you. Love will never forsake you. God is love. Now, it's not like the God is love that so many of the world tends to say it is, that he overlooks every, every sin. It's not our trump card to do whatever we want. So many times I hear so many people say, God will make a way, but where are they serving him? God will do it. Oh, he loves us. Yes, he does. He paid the price for us by sending Jesus, but he also expects, to, expects us to love him, to serve him, to be entwined with him. Don't let the trespasses of the past keep your heart in prison. Choose to love. Let the love of Christ lord over your heart. Let his love rule your thoughts and your mind. Let love order your steps. Choose to walk in love. Dwell in love. Choose to dwell in love, dwell in God's way of doing things. When the storms of life seem to crash against your ship, Choose to trust Christ. Don't be distracted by waves and winds. Don't let the cares, concern, and worries of life take you off course. Choose to trust God. He is the author and finisher of your faith. He is your hope. He is love. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. He's giving us this. He's leading us. Our blueprint. You know, when you walk or hike and there's a trail... I know up in, in Townsend and other places that you try, they have little uh, cards that have maps, and it tells you what trail to go up and where to go and where to turn and what not to do and, and, and all that. Here it is. If you're not digesting this, if you're not living in this, you cannot walk in faith. You cannot walk in love. You cannot do those things. You cannot have the fruit of the Spirit. This is where we get what we need. Yes, we come to the cross. And I sure don't want to be almost saved, Pastor Dale. I don't want to be almost saved. When that trumpet call sounds... Or I might meet the Lord some other way. I don't want to be second-guessing where I'm going. I want to be bound to heaven. 
I want to be there when my time is up. I don't want to have to be wondering if and when or if I'm going to be. I don't want to be an if I'm going to be. I want to be when I'm going to be in heaven. God loves you. His love is unfailing. Isn't it wonderful? His love doesn't have strings attached. You know, so many times you hear somebody, well, I'll do this if you do that. I'll give you this if you give me that. If you'll just do this, I promise you I will, I will make right and I'll, I'll do the same thing for you. It's not how God works. That's not how God loves us, Phyllis. That's not how, what God said. He said, I love you unconditionally. No strings attached. No strings attached. This love is free for you. Eileen, it's free for you. His love is more powerful than your fears. His love is more powerful than your failures. His love is more powerful than your bitterness. His love is more powerful than your hurt. His love is more powerful than your pain. Choose to walk in love and let love lead your path. Mm. Let love lead your path. And then we have the Holy Spirit. All the Christians have the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have all the Christians. All the believers receive the Holy Spirit at salvation, but the filling of the Holy Spirit comes into believers only at the time of complete surrender. We have to surrender to the Spirit. Surrender everything. You know, he's part of the Trinity. We can't have God and Jesus and then put the Holy Spirit somewhere else as an it or have him somewhat or have him something. He's not a something. He's a someone. It's a trinity. I don't know where your beliefs are, but I'm, I, I have the trinity. I have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he's there. If we don't walk in the Spirit, we will walk in the flesh. We toil in the flesh. We will run and grow tired. We will walk and grow weary. If we're weary, we've got to get, we've got to get tuned back in to the Spirit. We've got to get tuned back in to what God has for us. You can't run a car and run it and run it and run it and don't get it tuned up and run it and run it and run it and don't get gas and run it and run it and run it and don't fix it up. It's the way it is with us and Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit filling us to overflowing. We needed tonight. We needed to just sit, sit up or stand up and just worship the Lord. Not for what he's done, not for what he's going to do, but for who he is. He is the love of our lives. And the Spirit is communing with us. If we don't walk, we will become sour and exhausted. If we don't learn how to walk in the Holy Spirit, life becomes a heavy yoke and ministry becomes a difficult burden. It can be a difficult burden, can it? Where do you get your help from? That's right. Where do you all get your help from? I hope it's Jesus. It's elementary. I'm not saying anything that has not already been said. I'm not telling you anything that you probably haven't heard. But I'm reminding you because we're going into a battle. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds our hand, and we better make sure we're holding his pretty tight. 
when I was listening, when I was reading this and I was studying this and I was getting into this, all I could think of was, where, where are you taking me through this, Lord? For tomorrow and the next day and the next day. I've been there with you since you were saved. I'm going to be there with you when you go and when you keep on going. We're living in the last days. We need to be grounded in him. I'm seeing things that I never thought were possible. I walk in to places and I see things that I just shake my head at. But I'm walking in the Spirit because I know that God's in control. He's still in control, and I'm believing that. To walk in the Spirit, you must, you must start talking to the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship with you. God gives us love, Jesus gives us grace, and the Spirit gives us communion. The Spirit gives us communion. Most of us think that the Spirit's gift is tongues or maybe power, but the primary gift is a relationship. Because without that relationship, you can't, ha you can't be speaking in tongues. You can't be filled. You got to start with the relationship. It comes right down to it. Relationship. He's there for the relationship. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. John 16, 8. He's our advocate. He is our advocate. Not it. It's not a wind. It's not a power. It's he's our advocate. His gift is not just conviction but communion. When believers think of the Holy Spirit, their minds quickly move to the fact that the Holy Spirit's role is to convict us of sin. He also, and this is what I love, he also wants to convict us of the righteousness that we have through Jesus Christ. See, we forget about that part. We always want to say he's going to convict us of sin. But he also convicts us that we have righteousness through Jesus Christ. Many people don't have fellowship with the Holy Spirit because they view the Holy Spirit as a force instead of a friend. Wow. They see him as a power, not as a person. Jesus never referred to the Holy Spirit as an it, but always as he. Just like we read in the scripture. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a dove. He's not wind, fire, cloud, force, or power. It's intimacy with the Holy Spirit that brings fruit. Our relationship with him and fruit comes. Fruit comes as a result of that relationship, of that communion. Got to have it. This wasn't just made to look nice on a vine. This was made to feed us. This was made to give us strength. This was made to take care of us, not to just sit there and look at it. I love fruit. I like grapes. I like oranges. And I know God has a purpose for them, just like he has a purpose for the spirit that lives inside us. And just like the spirit that we commune with on a daily basis. Isn't that wonderful that we can commune with him on a daily basis? That we don't have to just wait for church. So many of people, they wait for church so that the preacher can give them a few scriptures. Oh, and if we're 
if the church is really blessed, they come to Sunday school where they get a little few, few more scriptures. Now, I'm pushing Sunday school because I like Sunday school. <laughs> and they come and have a few more scriptures. But what happened to Monday? What happened to Tuesday? Oh, well, we got Wednesday. If, if people are really going to come to church, we'll get them, get them a few times on Wednesday. People. We need this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then we roll back over again to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Like I said, it's not anything new, but we need it. We need to be reminded of it so many times. This may come as a shock, but we are not called to work on our character. We are called to work on our relationship. Because once we have that with the Holy Spirit, and he will work on the character in us. He will do that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing there is no law. Galatians 5.22. Life filled with the Holy Spirit is not you trying to live for God, but letting the Holy Spirit live for you. Sanctification comes when we just let Jesus live in our place. Now, we've learned to walk. We've learned to commune. God still has a purpose for us, is to run this race. Thank you so much, Naomi. I appreciate you bringing it. And she loves to run. And I remember what my daughter said one time, if I'm running, you better run too because there's something after me. And that's probably about the only time you'll see me run. But we're going to talk about it in the spiritual aspect of running the race. You were running the race nobly. Who has interfered or hindered and stopped you from, from your heeding and following the truth? Galatians 5, 7. And that's from the, uh, I guess, the amplified version. Don't look to the left or to the right. As a runner, Naomi, do you look to the left or to the right? Okay. <laughs> so... Don't look to the left. Choose to focus forward. Choose to run your race. Your race has purpose. Your race has designed for you. You were graced for your race. You were groomed for your grace because you've walked through the faith, through the love, and through what God has for you. You were groomed for your race. You were created for your race. Choose to be focused, diligent, steadfast, and determined to complete the race that God has given you. What must a runner do for a 26.2-mile marathon? I don't know. So we're going to go with what someone had said. Marathon runners must be completely conscious of their run. They have to be completely conscious of their surroundings, the needs and wants of their fellow run runners, etc. Whoever heeds life giving correction will be home among the wise in Proverbs 15:31. So you better know what you're doing if you're going to run a 26.2 mile race. In Colossians 3:12, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and clearly loved, dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Marathon training and running a marathon has so much to do with what one wears. Not much. You don't want to be bogged down when you're running. They just get overheated if they ha and they have to give up sometimes way too early if they're bogged down and have too much. If we're bogged down by the cares of life, by sin, bogs us down. 
These are the light virtues. We, if we wear these, it will be easy. It will be an easy run. Other clothing like pride, greed, jealousy, lust, gluttony, laziness, etc., are heavy clothing. They only make for a wearisome run. If we have these, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be too bogged down to run the race that God has chosen for us. Marathon and ultra marathons are long runs. Often during training, one asks the question, I don't think Naomi has because she loves running. She even said it on Facebook. Why am I doing this? If a runner does not have an answer to this question, it would be very wearisome and a horrible experience. Jesus answered, he said, you want to run this marathon called, marathon called life? Get to the core of it. It's love. Forget all about the various details and rules and regulations. They will not get you to the finish line. When you run, keep your entire being focused on two things. Two things as you're running this race. The Lord, your God, and your neighbor, your family, your friends, your church people, the people that you're around continuously. And that even means work at times. Love them with everything you've got, and you'll be okay. You will finish strong. And then there it says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going to skip over some of these things because time is going. To run a race... You don't just decide one day, oh, I'm going to run a race of 26.2 miles. You prepare for it, correct? You train and eat, sleep and run. God has a plan, and it's eternal. And what we are doing here is just preparation for eternity. People, this is not all we have to live for can't say it enough. It's not all we have to live for. If all this world is what we have to live for, what a crying shame. What a crying shame. But we have eternity, and we're just preparing for it. How exciting the journey is, and what a shouting there will be when we reach the finish line. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Shouting. The walk is going to build your stamina. We learned about the walk. The race will get you home. I had to put that down because I didn't want to forget it. The Lord woke me up with that the other day. And I had to think, the walk is going to build my stamina, but the race is going to get me home. We're going to race to get home. People, we're on a race to get home. We shouldn't be discouraged that the Lord might come back. That should be something exciting we're looking forward to. Heaven should be exciting to look forward to. I've got one scripture here. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, produ Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has 
poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us Romans 5, 1 through 5. Thank the good Lord for Romans 1 through 5, 1 through 5. over your feet. You know what I got out of that among a lot of other stuff? Get her done. Get her done. We got a job to do, don't we? We need to walk in the Spirit, get the fullness of the Lord. If you brought something you want to offer to the Lord tonight, and the Bible teaches for us to do that if we can, God will bless you for it. This is our mission night, as you know. And if anybody needs any special prayer tonight, if you haven't already gotten it, we don't want you to leave without it. Appreciate the teaching. Appreciate the Spirit of the Lord being here. Man, I just feel like I've been fed from the Lord's table. Hallelujah. We've been in His presence. Great looking crowd tonight. Appreciate you being here so much. Hope you'll come back next week. We've got lots of exciting things that's happening. More and more is going to be happening. We're going to be talking about other stuff. God's getting ready to do something. If you haven't had an opportunity to look at the kids' wall, Look at the kids down through there. You'll be amazed at some of the pictures that you see. You might see your grandbaby hanging there. Uh, the picture, anyway. Not, not, not the baby, I hope. But uh, might see the picture hanging there. Praise the Lord. Let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer, and let's just ask Him to, to keep His hand on us. Father, we love You so much. Just thank You for mercy and grace. Thank You for the teaching of Your Word. Thank you, Lord, that you've instructed us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, God, that we're supposed to have those in our life. And Thank you for this teaching. Lord, we're so grateful for your presence here tonight. I just can't thank you enough that you chose to come to be with us. I appreciate that so much. Lord, I pray for every person that you'd go with us, that you'd hold us in the palm of your hand, meet the needs of those that are hurting tonight, pull those up close to you. I pray that your people will sleep with a peace tonight, God. It passes all understanding. Only those who trust in you can sleep that way. We praise you for that peace. And we ask you to lead us, direct us, and guide us. In Jesus' name, and the church shouted, amen. amen. Go with God, and he'll always go with you. Love you guys very, very much. If you need special prayer, come on up.